She burnt me with an eye and forced me to sleep on the sofa. Police wouldn't believe me if I reported her. She burnt me with... Managed to call 999 before Glass I saw her. She isolated me from... Domestic abuse is often portrayed as a gendered crime, perpetrated by men against women. But many men suffer physical, emotional, sexual and financial abuse from their intimate partners. Through the lens of these survivors, we are exposed to the complex and disturbing realities of men in the hands of their abusers and the remarkable journeys they undertake to rebuild their lives. Um, and so I met my, well, this lady as I, I moved to London and she was, she was full of charm, she was very extrovert, so I was drawn to her. Um, and as I got to know her, there were all these kind of stories of real hardship and childhood abuse that she'd been through. So I guess I kind of felt sorry for her, like I wanted to help her. And then this relationship sort of started to emerge. I got closer to her. The stories of what she'd been through got worse. And so as her behavior towards me started to get worse, I, I just felt that it was this person that I needed to help. I, I didn't think that it was bad behavior because all the time I'm thinking, well, she's been through so much, she's trying her best. And so this kind of dynamic emerge where I'm sort of her carer, I'm trying to look after her, I'm trying to help her, but I'm also falling into this relationship as well. So there's not like a moment where I suddenly realized I was in this. Um, I, I was in an abusive relationship for years, in fact, without knowing it was abuse. And it wasn't until near the end, like eight years in, when I was challenged by a neighbor who'd witnessed a physical attack uh, on me. She, she'd come into our house at the point that my ex-wife was attacking me. And she said to me later that evening, I, I remember she's a very well-spoken woman. She said, Andrew, you do realize this is domestic abuse. And I remember when she said that, I was thinking, oh, is it? Oh, well, maybe. And I started to think back over the last eight years and think, well, maybe, maybe it's not all me. Maybe actually I haven't just provoked all this stuff on a year to year basis. But that was eight years in. And before that neighbor challenging me, I'd never have dreamt that it was abuse. There were days when I'd go to work with cuts on my faces and bruises, but and I would say it was a shaving incident. It was always a shaving incident. And I'd obviously try and hide that behavior. On um, one initial occasion when I just hoped it was gonna be a one-off um, in the first six months of us living together. But um, probably a couple of years after that, um, it started to become a regular pattern if we had a disagreement about something. Um, my wife would end it by slapping me hard across the face. Um, and it didn't happen all that often. It was maybe um, once a month, once every two months. And that lasted for about 18 months. John, not his real name, is one of thousands of male domestic abuse victims in the UK. He wants to share his story, but he has told us to conceal his identity. Um. But the first act of abuse is about a year into my relationship. Um, we were out Christmas shopping and we got in an argument. I can't even remember what the argument was about. Uh, she was wearing high heel boots and she just stamped on my foot um, and left me with a limp, basically. Um, and then after a couple more years, it, it, it just gradually got worse and worse, getting upset if I would go out with my friends just just to watch football or something like that. They, they, um, she didn't like that and she would have um, basically a tantrum and in the end it just became easier just to give in to that and it, it, that pattern of behaviour continued again and again and again. In the UK, statistics show that one in three victims of domestic abuse are male. Um, I think male abuse is grossly overlooked. It's grossly underreported. Um, and studies have shown or researches have shown that the numbers of males being domestically abused is going up. Because of the masculinity of the males, they tend to, you know, um, live with this kind of, abuse for a very long time, not until it's actually getting out of hand, huh? when things are getting really bad before they tend to come forward. And at that point, that's it most probably be going to the police 
and then the GP gets involved. And when such thing happens, we put a safeguarding meeting in place. We invite them to have a chat and then talk about what's been said or what the report we've got and what safety netting they've had in place. According to the national statistics, 1.7 million women and 699,000 men experienced domestic abuse in 2022. The violence, as I said, consisted of a hard slap across the face for uh, about 18 months, um, beating me. So once she tried to pull me out of the, the bath by my foot, um, she beat me across the chest. She whipped me with a belt. I got marks on my back um, with a, from a studded belt. She was in a rage. She was in an uncontrollable rage. And then there were three occasions of the course of a week where she assaulted me really quite seriously. The last time over an extended period or twice in the, in the day, I was chased upstairs and I, you know, I didn't respond at all um, other than trying to protect myself. And she ripped my clothes. A friend of mine had to collect me from outside the house um, to get away. Um, and and uh, that night, the next morning, I thought I might be suffering from slight concussion. So I thought I'd better just report this to my doctor, to my GP. And the GP advised me to go to the police. Many men are trapped in abusive relationships for years without telling anyone. You're talking um, physical attacks, uh, and that's what I massively, massively feared. Uh, biting, uh, I was stabbed with a pencil, for example, um, being attacked with household objects. A metal watering can was attacked with one of those, um, really bruised down sort of my ribs. Um, a lot of punching. She, she had a heck of a punch. There's a whole emotional side to what is domestic abuse so she'd often refer to me in public we'd be out for dinner with friends as her third child um and she did sort of said the kind of the, the humiliation the thing that i'm skinny i don't you know i don't stand up for myself i'm useless i'm used so there's all that kind of emotional abuse that goes on uh, for, if you're caught in an abusive relationship where there are those dynamics taking place and, and you're afraid of your partner and you're being bullied then coming home is not safe coming home is not nice Coming home is fearful. You never, ever know what, what you're going to be coming into. Even in the good times, you're on edge because the good times can just switch just like that. According to the national statistics, half of male victims fail to tell anyone that they are a victim of domestic abuse and are two and a half times less likely to tell anyone than female victims. So, for example, my mum has about seven mobile phone numbers in my contacts list for me. So every time I would get a mobile phone, um, it would mysteriously get broken if I started contacting people she didn't want me to contact. Um, and there were other things like she would check all my social media, all my emails, so she would log into my emails. So she would do that on the pretense of helping me to say I was looking for a job. She would check my emails to see the response to an interview or something. Um, but what she would also do then is would reply to emails from my family as if they were me. And she would respond to text messages from my family as if they were me. And then not tell me about it. Um, so, for, for example, my mum's 70th birthday, my we turned up two hours late and I didn't have a clue that we were two hours late because she told me the wrong time. And she deleted all the communication that she'd had with my mum. Uh, the physical, when it happened, was quite bad. Um, but it was relatively few and far between. Um, as long, it was basically as long as I did more or less what she wanted, it was fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get abused. It's when she lost control of the situation, then her temper would come out and she'd hit me. And I, I never responded in kind. The most I ever did was to grab her wrists to stop her hitting me. I removed myself from that situation, go to the kitchen and eat a packet of crisps, but you know, I didn't really eat it really like crush them if you like in my mouth, I don't know how to describe it, but I would just eat and eat and eat to try and 
feel a bit better, I suppose, or anything. It's just my way of trying to cope with it. I mean, she was always in sort of complete control at all times, because you'd never know what was going to happen next. Because also we had children, so what I wanted was a peaceful home. So when it's kicking off, it's always me trying to retreat, trying to defuse the situation. After years of suffering abuse from his wife, Richard finally reported his abuser to the police. But things quickly went downhill for him. So then social services got involved, and to cut a very long story short, they ended up believing that um, she was the, the victim and that I was the uh, perpetrator because there seems to be this um, inherent bias in, in social services um, of assuming that the men are always the perpetrators. And um, certainly that, that was the case uh, in, in my, uh, my scenario. And, um, and the end result has been that I've been separated from my baby son from, from when he was nine months old, um, sorry, 11 months old. And I didn't see my son again for about four, four and a half months. and had to go to court just to be able to see my own son. I missed his first birthday, didn't know where they were, um, what was going on. And to this day, I've never had to be given an adequate explanation as to why they did that. I've never been given any reason. And it's been like that for 21 months and it's cost me um, if, if I'd taken most people's advice and employed a solicitor and a barrister for the court proceedings, it would have cost me about £25,000. I've managed to use a Mackenzie friend um, who was much, much cheaper, but it still cost me thousands of pounds. I mean, this whole affair has cost me well over £10,000, £12,000 one way or another. Um, and that's not to, <laughs> not to count the distress that's been caused to me. The one thing an abusive person works hard to do is to isolate their partner from their friends and family. I'd been isolated from all my friends and family, um, so I, I didn't feel I had anywhere else to go or I could, to, could get away from it, even if I wanted to. Um, there's nowhere for men to go, there are no refuges, especially if you've got children. There's absolutely nowhere for you to go. Um, and it may sound old-fashioned and stupid, but I, I believe that uh, it's better for the par for parents to stay together in a family unit for the children if they possibly can. I spent £50,000 trying to see my children going through the court. I tried my hardest to keep the three of them together and I had them out outside of my control, ripped, ripped apart as a family. And I've always tried to look like I'm happy for my children, but a lot of the time I'm not. The system failed me and it failed, more importantly, my children. One of the leading charities supporting male victims of domestic abuse in the UK, Mankind Initiative, receive over 200,000 visitors on their website each year and have a national helpline that men can ring for advice. Well, one of the biggest barriers that men face is around children, also is around love, and also the fact that for many men, they want to spend what time they have in trying to actually help their abusive partner. And so that's where many men's thought processes and patterns are, especially because they worry about that if they leave, and leave their children behind. They don't want to leave their children behind with somebody who's abusive, but also they worry about never seeing their children again. So what we always recommend is to build a safety plan and talk to trusted friends and family, and also to make sure that they use the laws which are available to them, such as occupation orders and non-molestation orders, to make sure that they can protect them and their children and escape from the situation safely. It's very difficult if you're in an abusive relationship and there are children and, and the other, the other per, per person in that relationship is the parent of, of that child. Because, you know, in particular as a guy, what do I do? I, I leave and leave my, ha my children in the hands of an abusive person. You know, that, that doesn't feel very fair. We know that a parent, you know, you, you give up your own life for your kids, right? Um, if I leave, 
what about seeing the kids? You know, I'm, I'm now conscious that I'm in an abusive relationship. All the spite and hatred that's gone into that, that abuse. Well, when I'm not there, that's got to go somewhere. And most likely that will go into a new game, a new sort of bit of warfare where it's about family courts, access to children. So I genuinely feared, well, if I leave, will I see my kids again? When will, will I have to fight through the family courts to see them? Uh, and in which case, should I wait till they're much older before I leave? Should I somehow uh, survive in this relationship? Experts say many men do not speak up due to the stigma attached. Well, I think for many men, they feel a real sense of shame and embarrassment. They feel that the abuse that they're suffering from makes them less of a man. And also they fear that they won't be believed or taken seriously if they do tell anybody. In addition, they're not often aware that there's services and helplines which are available to them. The problem with telling someone is as a guy, you feel quite ashamed that you're allowing this, a, a true man wouldn't allow this to happen. A true man would be able to stand up for himself and be in control of the situation. So there is definitely a stigma of, of not wanting to open up. Uh, you already feel weak and broken that you're in that situation and now everybody's gonna know. Behind their smiling facade lay hidden anguish as they suffer silently in the hands of their abusers. The impact that it has on men uh, ranges from psychological abuse, they feel isolated, that they feel humiliated, uh, they feel ground down. It obviously stems also and crosses over into physical abuse, so they have physical injuries to deal with. And also economic abuse where they, they have no control on their finances or made bankrupt. And also other issues about coercive control where they're in fear, uh, they're being harmed, they're being isolated from friends and family. But the one thing that many victims tell me uh, when they become survivors, is that when it comes to physical injuries, you know, the scars will heal, the broken bones will heal, and the injuries will start to heal. But the issue often with them is the psychological and emotional abuse that they've had of being ground down, being told they're worthless, being humiliated. Um, that can take many, many years to actually overcome and allow those men to get on and rebuild their lives. The, the effect of abuse can vary from minimal, losing my family, losing my friend, to actually taking my own life. There are no set ways for healing and rebuilding, as each survivor's story is different. I've had some counselling. Um, time has helped. Uh, I'm blissfully remarried uh, to a wonderful woman. That has helped. Talking about it openly has helped. Just being quite frank about what I'm going through has helped. The, um, the way I got through, it was my family. So the only support I got was my, from my family. I, I am, I'm definitely a lot happier now, but it, it's hard um, to, to trust anyone. Either I have a very good support network, um, I've had to find a deep faith within myself to keep myself going and spend time in nature early in the mornings and things like that. With each passing day, these resilient souls embarked on a journey of healing learning to overcome the trauma that had plagued their lives. My best advice that I'm going to give to any man um, undergoing domestic abuse is he should seek help. And helps are available. He shouldn't keep quiet. They shouldn't suffer in silence. They shouldn't think it's their fault. And they're not alone. There's thousands of men going through this every single day. But also importantly, there's thousands of men leaving abusive relationships all of the time. So if you are in trouble, if you are in an abusive relationship, you can escape. Many men just like you do.